Hi, and welcome back to my series of videos for Physical Chemistry 2. In the last video, we saw that when atoms combine to form a molecule, their atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals, which might extend over several different atoms. We saw two different examples of molecular orbitals formed by combining two 1s atomic orbitals. One was a bonding orbital, and the other was an antibonding orbital. Today, I want to look more deeply at those orbitals and several other common molecular orbitals. First, let's look at 1s orbitals on two separate hydrogen atoms. The color you see here is actually important. As you might remember, this picture of an orbital represents the 1s wave function. A wave function can have both positive and negative values, and in the pictures we'll look at today, the color blue represents areas where the wave function is positive, and red is for areas where the wave function is negative. As you can see in this picture, this wave function is positive everywhere. Now let's join these two hydrogen atoms into an H2 molecule. When we do that, the atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals. Here's what we get. As you might remember, we get the MOs by forming a linear combination of atomic orbitals. We get the first orbital by adding the two wave functions, and we get the other one by subtracting the second orbital from the first one. As you can see, that means that in the second MO, the area on the right represents a region where the resulting wave function has a negative value. At the exact point where the wave function switches from being positive to negative, it must be equal to zero, and at that point, we have a node. That means there's zero probability of finding an electron at that position, and that means there's no bond in this system. That's why this one is an antibonding orbital, whereas the other system, which doesn't have a node, has a bonding orbital. It turns out that, aside from telling whether the MO is bonding or antibonding, we can also describe them by their symmetry. From back in video 15, you might remember that we looked at different symmetry elements. One of them was a center of inversion. A molecule has a center of inversion if every atom in the molecule has an identical atom at a point at the opposite end of the molecule relative to the molecule's center. For example, in a benzene molecule, the center of the molecule is here in the middle of the ring. Every atom in the molecule has a corresponding atom on the exact opposite side of the molecule. For example, if we look at this hydrogen atom, there's an equivalent hydrogen atom on the opposite side of the molecule. The same is true for this carbon atom. There's a carbon atom on the opposite side of the molecule's center, an equal distance from the center. The same concept is important for describing molecular orbitals. Here's how we do it. Imagine where the center of the molecule is. If the sine of the wave function, positive or negative, is always the same on opposite sides of the center point, we say that the orbital is Girard, which means even in German. The bonding orbital we see here is one example. Every point on the wave function is positive, and the corresponding points on the opposite side of the orbital are also positive. On the other hand, if points on opposite sides of the molecule have opposite sign, then we say the orbital is ungerad, meaning odd. That's the situation for the antibonding orbital. No matter which point we choose, the corresponding point on the other end of the molecule has the opposite sign. This gives us an easy way to give a symbol for the different types of molecular orbital. We start by writing whether the orbital represents a sigma orbital, pi orbital, or so on. The two orbitals we have here are both sigma orbitals, so the symbol we use will start with a lowercase sigma. Next, we write the symmetry of the orbital as a subscript, either G for Girard or U for Ungerad. Next, we write an asterisk after the symbol if it's an antibonding orbital. So far, we were just looking at molecular orbitals made of two 1s atomic orbitals. What happens if we combine other orbital types? 
Let's start by looking at two 2pz atomic orbitals. Once again, we'll join these two orbitals into a molecular orbital. We do that by either adding them or subtracting the second one from the first. Here's what we get from those two possibilities. Notice what we got. This time, when we added the two orbitals, the negative part of the left atomic orbital canceled out some of the positive part of the other orbital. That means there's a node at the center of the molecular orbital, which makes it an antibonding orbital. Meanwhile, the center of the other molecular orbital is a region with a significant electron density, which makes it a bonding orbital. Let's write the symbol for each of these MOs. Both of these orbitals are sigma orbitals, because if we rotate them so that we're looking down the bond, we can see that they're both circularly symmetric around the bond axis. So both symbols start with a sigma. Next, we'll look at the symmetry of the wave function. The sign on the first orbital changes as we pass through the center of the molecule. So this is an Ungerod orbital. Meanwhile, if we choose a point on the other MO, we find that the point opposite it has the same sign, so it's a Girard orbital. That means the first orbital has a subscript U, and the other one has a subscript G. Finally, the first orbital is an antibonding orbital, so that symbol ends with an asterisk. Let's look at one more example. Here are two 2px atomic orbitals. Once again, we'll join the two orbitals into a molecular orbital. We do that by either adding them or subtracting the second one from the first. Here's what we get from those two possibilities. Notice what we got. This time, when we add the two orbitals, the positive parts of the two orbitals overlap, as do the negative parts. That means there's significant electron density between the two atoms, which makes this a bonding orbital. Meanwhile, positive and negative parts of the second system overlap, causing a node between the two atoms, which makes the MO an antibonding orbital. Let's write the symbols for these MOs. Both of these orbitals are pi orbitals, because if we rotate them so that we're looking down the bond, we can see that they're not circularly symmetric around the bond axis. So, both symbols start with a pi. Next, we look at the symmetry of the wave function. The sign of the first orbital changes sign as we pass through the center of the molecule, so this is an Ungerod orbital. Meanwhile, if we choose a point in the other MO, we find that the point opposite it always has the same sign, so it's a Girard orbital. That means the first orbital has a subscript U, and the other one has a subscript G. Finally, the second orbital has a node between the two atoms, so it's an antibonding orbital. So that symbol ends with an asterisk. Well, that's enough new material for now. When we meet again, we'll look at the energies of the molecular orbitals we've seen, and we'll see the connection between MOs and UV-Vis spectroscopy. I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, have a good week. <laughs>